If you're on this video, then you're here because you're ready to work on your ancient coin. So let's get started by explaining that the majority of this is a hyper simple mesh that is going to be 90% texture. So let's get started by adding in a cylinder, go to scale, and let's go ahead and make it super small, scale down, and there we have it. We now have a coin. We'll probably need to make it smaller for, it, for other issues, but we're going to go ahead and set up its UV, or check out its UV, and this is actually fine. This is perfect for what we want. And we're going to export as an FBX. Someplace we can find it, export. And now we move over to Substance Designer. Now that we're in Substance, let's go ahead and make a new. We're going to select or uh, navigate to where we placed it, which is just in our documents our untitled FBX, which is fine. This is going to become a coin here in a little bit. And we're good. Now we're ready to add in our uh, gold texture. Boom. That did not take very long at all. Oh, and we can see that it did have an error when it exported it, it placed the edges underneath um, underneath what we wanted. So we have to go back and fix that. So we're back. We're going to go to face, grab this, switch over. Well, actually, let's grab both top and bottom, switch over to our edge mode. And we're going to mark as seam. And I'm going to select one of these edges and mark it as a seam as well. Now, I'll do a smart project. Oh, wrap everything. And unwrap. There we go. Now I will export, I'll save as a coin and export my FBX again and this time I'll actually name it coin and let's put it where it belongs in blender now let's open this up again select Okay, discard the old, and as you can see, we already have something better to work with. So let's go ahead and do a fill layer, and we're going to select the gold. Boom, done. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a, we're going to add something in to our substance painter, and that is called a bump map. Now this bump map needs is going to be your face and you're going to take out all the color of it. You're, it's just going to be a exactly what it sounds like, a bump map. It's going to add in detail onto your coin that we don't want to have to model in and substance will actually make it so that those bumps have shadows or uh, impact give impact on light and shadow and it's extremely dynamic and it's extremely useful it saves hours and hours and hours and quite a few polygons that need to be spent elsewhere so let's get on to that now it's time to work on our the uh, the face that we're bringing in. I've taken a picture of myself shortly after the uh, storm that we just all recently have experienced here in Texas and I am just erasing all the bits that I don't need popping up into our texture and 
then I'm going to remove all the color from the rest of the scene. Now the reason why I'm using GIMP is one, it's free, two, I'm well practiced in using it, and four, it's capable of doing what I want it to do. You can do the same thing in Adobe Photoshop, which you have access to, because you are students. You can also do the same thing in uh, Paint, even, though it might take you a little bit longer. I'm using what the tool that I am most familiar with to get this done as quickly as possible. Once I'm done turning this into a black and white image, then I'm going to work on removing as much of the color as I can. Now that I removed the color, I need to remove the white from this whole thing. Uh, using the um, using the magic wand m makes this move a little bit faster. However, and as you may have guessed it, there is the tool select by color, which I just remembered exists. So I use that to select the rest of the white saving me valuable minutes, which I will now spend on editing this video. Remember that you need to export and not save, and save it as something that you can remember to use. Now, pull up Substance, and we're going to work on importing it in. I've already imported this a few times to play around with it to make certain that the tool hasn't changed dramatically, which it has changed quite a bit since the last time I did this type of tutorial. So type in, find your object, or what you named your face to be. You're going to go in, click the undefined, and set it to texture. Then you're going to set it to uh, just this instance and then set head it to import you have to do all these steps otherwise it will not accept your texture next we're going to uh, you're going to select your face on there and if you just go by this you have a your brush will act like a stamp and just uh, will just color directly onto your uh, UV or mesh. However, this is not ideal. Instead, you want to go down to where it's materials, turn everything else, turn off everything except for height, and then where it says height. So let me go ahead and remove this part. you're going where it says height as right above the black and white bar the black and white bar used to do something really fun and cool but it doesn't really do that anymore if i just remove make it so that um, without doing any of the de any of the detail on here you have the ability to make indents on your coin or directly onto your texture it's very cool, it's very useful for other things, however it doesn't do the amazing cool stuff that it used to do. Now if we click on where it says height and select uh, our face, which it doesn't matter if it's black or white, and go on to our full size, it isn't big enough to do our entire texture. So we're going to go to where it says uh, projection and we're going to size ourselves up in the UV map area so that our projection is covering just where we want it to be and then we can paint directly onto that 
Make certain it's all lined up correctly and centered. And then, then start painting on and it will make a solid, it will create the indent based off of your map. Congratulations, you've just made your first bump map. However, this doesn't look terribly great by itself. So let's do a little bit of editing. Using the same process as before, I'm going to select uh, flakes here, and I'm going to uh, rough up the edges of my coin so that it looks like an older school coin. And let's go ahead and mesh, mess with how I set this up before. Spacing, stroke opacity, size of the stroke, particles, just like that. And I'm going to paint onto my texture. As you can see, there's a little bit of warping going on on the side of my coin. That's not terribly important considering this is a coin. And as I paint onto it, it is creating a little bit of a warp onto the edges. That's actually kind of what I'm wanting to go for. Okay, now that we have our texture all finished up, we're going to go to export textures and we're going to set the output to be a 2D view, a PNG, set it to 16 bits, set it to 16 bits, and then we export. Ta -da. Now it should be and with your Blender file or wherever you told it to do this. Next, we go to our Blender file with our coin in it. We're going to create a new node by clicking the new, which I'll show you real fast. Just do new and it gives you what you need. Now, here, let's go to open. It'll go straight to our Blender file if you've already got it set up. Click on our PNG, and it doesn't show up. Now that's just because it's not linked to anything. You have to add in a node. This is for you to see what you are working with, so that you are know what is what. You're going to go to add, texture, image, open, your PNG and now you're going to set your color to the base color and you're also going to set the color to a number of other things including metallic well, yes spectral roughness Let's see here. normal and let's see there's base color metallic spectral roughness surface color and emission now that should be everything in here base color roughness normal now, what a normal map is, is this, uh, it's basically the bumping on it. It makes it so that you don't have to worry about a ton of extra detail that on the model that would cause tons and tons and tons of polygons. Normal used to be called bump map. It's now a normal map. Uh, 
uh, emission alpha. Do we want alpha on here? It has an alpha in your base texture, so it doesn't hurt to attach it. Attach alpha to alpha, though, if you need that. Everything else should be good once you've got all these things attached. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why can't I just attach the color to the output? Basically, the program doesn't know uh, what each of the output pieces and parts are until you tell it in Blender. Some programs are better at dealing with this than others, and there are settings in uh, Substance that you will be delivering a different texture, different piece out every single time. In fact, let me show you what these look like. like. This is the actual normal. This is the opacity. This is the roughness. This is the metallic glow base color and then you have the uh, standard face bit. This is uh, standard for it. And then you have the OBJ. Uh, which has no texture on it. This is how you put the texture on the model inside your program. And when you save it correctly, it will uh, generate what you want and need. This way, when you put it onto something like ArtStation, it has your texture on there. Okay, so I expect at least this texture, picture, scent, it completely linked up on your Blender file and your Blender file with a render on it. Now let's go to Layout to make certain that it renders correctly. I've put a lookout constraint on my camera. I've zoomed in a lot. Let's do a render image. It looks good to me. This is how you get an A for this project.